We had really a record year, uh, 41 uh, new design wins with uh, more than 30 OEMs. This is really a record uh, figure. Those new design wins are responsible for a pipeline of 50 million cars uh, going uh, forward. Uh, this is compared to 37 million in, in 2020. Our revenue uh, rose year on year by about 40%. So we'll finish, uh, we finished uh, 2021 with $1.4 billion. And during 2021, I know there were 188 uh, vehicle models launched with uh, Mobileye uh, inside. On the right-hand side, you can see uh, how you know, the number of uh, IQ chips that have been uh, shipped. In 2020, it was 19.3 million uh, units, and uh, 2021, 28.1. And overall, since uh, 2007 till uh, today, we, uh, we celebrated 100 million IQ chips shipped to date. This means 100 million cars on the road with mobilized uh, technology. During 2021, there were also some industry first uh, launches. We uh, launched the first uh, level three uh, vehicle with, uh, with Honda in Japan. We are responsible for the computer vision. A 120 uh, degrees field of view with an eight megapixel uh, camera, uh, very, very high resolution camera. This was launched this year with, uh, with BMW. Uh, we are talking about uh, um, cloud enhanced uh, driving assist using our crowdsourced uh, uh, technology called uh, REM. This is, has been launched with the uh, Volkswagen uh, this year. And really the crown jewel still with the level two is our 11, it's called Supervision, 11 cameras around the car powered by two IQ uh, chips with an ECU designed by, uh, designed by Mobileye. And uh, we also received, uh, we announced this week, we received the first design win for consumer level four. That means a car that you can buy not a ride-hailing uh, technology, a car that you can buy with the Geely, uh, the Zeker brand. SOP is going to be early 2024. Throughout the, uh, the year, we, we, we kind of uploaded unedited drives in Israel, in uh, New York City, in, uh, in Munich, Detroit, Paris, and, uh, and Tokyo. Uh, the Paris uh, site is a collaboration with the uh, RATP. RATP Group is, is the biggest uh, public transport operator in, uh, in France. And this is with collaboration with uh, MoveIt. MoveIt provides the uh, layers above the self-driving uh, system for, uh, for ride-hailing. Uh, employees of uh, Galerie Lafayette uh, can use the car to drive uh, autonomously from, uh, from work to, uh, to home. There's a safety driver at, at this point in time. And, and let's run this clip, it's fast forwarded, uh, but you can see kind of the, the, the richness and the challenge of, uh, of driving in, uh, in Paris and the kind of uh, challenges our car needs to, uh, needs to face while driving in, uh, in Paris. One needs to note that these two futures are not equivalent. That means the consumer AV future contains inside it also the robotaxi. Because if you can purchase a car, then of course you can add to it, you know, uh, uh, the layers of uh, drive, uh, of uh, ride hailing and sell it to uh, PTOs, to uh, you know, public transport operators, uh, uh, transportation network uh, uh, companies, and, and provide a service. The other way is not clear. That means if you have a robotaxi technology, which is geofenced and expensive, this does not lead to consumer AV. For consumer AV, you need geographic scalability and you need to, uh, you know, self-driving system cost way below $5,000. And we argue that the consumer AV, this needs to be purpose-built. You cannot start with a, a robotaxi uh, technology in terms of scalability, lack of scalability and high cost and bring it to a consumer AV. It really needs to be uh, purpose-built. And this is really what, what Mobileye is, uh, is doing. We're active on both fronts but thinking about scale, thinking about cost and, and, and scale and designing everything around cost and scale. 2022-2023 uh, timeframe looks like uh, a very, very reasonable timeframe for robotaxis and 2025 looks like a reasonable timeframe for consumer, consumer AV. 
What we are uh, announcing uh, today is three new generations of uh, IQ. The first, the, the lowest is the IQ6 uh, Lite. This is uh, supporting uh, level one, level two uh, ADAS. Uh, very, very low power consumption, around uh, three watts. So it's uh, behind the windscreen. It's a single box uh, driving assist, very, very powerful. Then an IQ6 uh, High, which is roughly equivalent to between two to three times IQ, uh, IQ5. This is going to power the next generation of our super supervision. And IQ Ultra, which takes all the learnings that we have done throughout the years of building an AV technology and understanding what exactly are the workloads, what kind of you know, silicon architecture to support those uh, workloads. After all these learnings, we are ready to design the ultimate chip, which is basically an AV on chip. We call that IQ uh, Ultra. It's not only about uh, tops. It's really the efficiency is born out of really understanding you know, this very, very tight interplay between hardware and software, what type of uh, cores, what type of algorithms to support uh, those cores. It's very, 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 very light in terms of, uh, of, you know, of, computing, of computing power. So th th this shows that you can be very efficient and, uh, and, and be lean in your compute if you design this uh, properly by designing both the hardware and the software uh, together. So the purpose of all of this is to take such a radar, which again, the cost is one-fifth to one-tenth of the cost of a LADAR, and use it as a standalone uh, sensor in a 2024, 2025 uh, timeframe. And then we can reduce cost considerably and, and be left only with a front-facing LADAR to create a three-way uh, redundancy. That, with the monolithic AV on chip, we get a, a system which is way below $5,000. What I want to focus now is to show you some, uh, some examples of what this radar can do together with the right algorithm supporting uh, the radar. So I'll, I'll do it step by step. Before I run this uh, clip, on the left-hand side, you see uh, uh, radar points. Uh, green versus yellow. Green is, is kind of elevation. So green is, is on the floor. Yellow is, is going up. Uh, the red and blue dots are, uh, the blue is, is vehicles that are, uh, that are away from us, and red are vehicles that are coming, uh, vehicles or other objects that are coming uh, towards us. So first thing that you can see before I run the clip, you can see that the, the curbs, the right and left curbs of the road, you see those green dots that, um, that, that show you that the radar sees the, sees the curb. But now let, let, let's run this. And you can see, you know, the complexity of the scene in terms of, you know, how many uh, cars very close to each other, pedestrians, um, you know, very congested uh, uh, scenario. And we'll stop in a point where you have uh, you have cones, and you can see here that you know th those cones are marked in, in, in yellow on the left hand uh, side. You can see them. Uh, you can see them clear. So our deep learning algorithms have not yet been trained on detecting cones, but the data exists in, 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 the radar, in, in the radar output. The definition of driving policy is the mapping between the sensing state, what, what all other road users are, are doing, their kinematics and, and obstacles and, and lane marks and so forth. Everything around the car is called a sensing state. And you, and you have kind of an engine that maps it into action, which is longitude and lateral control of, of, of the vehicle. So far, RSS you know, what was presented as a regulatory framework, which is, that, that was the purpose of, of, of the development of RSS, but we use it also as a foundation for our driving uh, policy. Basically what it says is that if we use induction and analytic uh, calculations, that means you need to present the problem in a way that will support analytic uh, calculations, RSS, the formal guarantees of RSS is that it couples all plausible futures, not all futures, all plausible futures, because we made assumptions on how you know, road users uh, uh, drive. This creates a very, very lean, uh, lean policy. So thank you for your patience and uh, see you next year. Thank you.